Hello gamers, Barmy here with the Elwyn Forest Hardcore Survival Guide, where you'll learn everything you need to know about Elwyn Forest so that you can survive and thrive in your hardcore World of Warcraft adventure. Whether you're brand new to classic World of Warcraft or a seasoned veteran, I'm sure that you'll learn something new in this guide. All important parts of the video have been timestamped and I've added more useful information in the description below. As a human, you will enter the Elwyn Forest here, south of Norsha Valley. Dwarves and gnomes who ventured this way will arrive here at the gates of Stormwind. Your first destination will be Goldshire, and the short run to get there should be easy and uneventful. The only potential dangers in this area are level 5 and 6 Defias Cut Purses that have set up camp in the area between the two roads. The most regular casualty to these mobs a low-level bank holds looking to make a quick dash to Stormwind. It's important to remember that these cut purses patrol very close to the roads and will ambush a low-level victim easily and end your run. In this area, our first person of interest can be found, Danny Anthania, aka the Crazy Cat Lady. Danny is a pet vendor and for only 36 silver will sell you a cute little companion cat. Goldshire is the first main quest hub in the zone, and you will set your hearthstone with Innkeeper Farley at the Lion Pride Inn. Farley sells the usual food and drink you will need to keep you in good health throughout the zone. The guys behind the bar are Barkit Dobbins and Brog Hamfist. Dobbins sells a variety of drinks and brews, including a skin of sweet rum. This will be required in a gathering quest from Redridge later in the game. Brog Hamfist is a general supplies vendor who sells thrown weapons, arrows and shot, flint and tinder, and most importantly, bags. My first big tip for any new character in any zone is to get all of your bag slots filled as soon as possible. In this video, I'll show you how to guarantee that these bag slots get filled early without having to rely on one dropping for a mob. The guys in the kitchen are Todrick and Thomas. Todrick is a butcher that sells a selection of meats, and Thomas is a cooking trainer who will teach you apprentice cooking for one silver. As a cooking apprentice, you will be able to cook both roasted boar meat and charred wolf meat, so it's wise to spend some time gathering the meat required to level your cooking skills while you're here. Underneath the kitchen are the warlock and demon trainers. Upstairs, we can find trainers for mages, priests and rogues, as well as the first aid trainer, Michelle Bell. In front of the inn, we find Irma, the stable master, for those hunters who have multiple pets. Across the road from the inn, we have the local forge for all your smelting and blacksmithing needs. If you want to train blacksmithing, then Smith Argus is your man. Here, we can also buy male armor and shields, a variety of weapons, and cloth and leather armor. Out of the back of the forge, we can find Paladin Trainer Brother Wilhelm and Warrior Trainer Lyria de Lac. Trade supplies can be bought off of Tharin Bowden, who stands next to his cart at the intersection. If you're looking for a skinning knife or a blacksmith's hammer, then he's your man. Skinning and leatherworking trainers are a little out of the way in the building northeast of the inn. If you want to make some nice early silver selling leathers, then Helena Pelt Skinner is your girl. If you want to craft leather equipment, then speak to Adele Fielder. The fishing trainer is here on the Crystal Lake jetty. A rod and lure can be bought off Tharin Bowden as well as a couple of early fish cooking recipes. The herbalism and alchemy trainers are hiding way up north here in this house. Again, be aware of the patrolling defias if you're coming this way at early levels. There is a tailoring trainer in Elwyn Forest but he hangs out here at the Eastvale Logging Camp. If you want to train tailoring straight away, I would suggest you go into Stormwind, as the journey there will be much safer. And finally, for engineering, mining and enchanting, you will have to go to Stormwind, as there are no journeyman trainers for these professions in Elwyn Forest. The next person of interest is Antonio Pirelli, the travelling salesman that patrols the main road from Lakeshire and Redridge to Sentinel Hill in Westfall. When in stock, 
you can pick up some really nice items from Antonio, including green braces and weapons. The best area to start questing are the fields that flank the Fargo Deep Mine, just south of Goldshire. On your way there, however, be aware, level 8 and 9 aggressive creatures exist on the eastern side of this ridge, and they will easily take out a low level character. The safest route to take is the western side of this ridge, where the level and the density of aggressive creatures is much lower. These fields are occupied by level 5 and 6 non-aggressive boars, and in my opinion, is the best area to get some early XP. As I mentioned, these boars are non-aggressive, so you can take them on one at a time. They're also a hyperspawn, so no matter how many people are farming, there's always something to kill. With the boar meat, you can level your cooking, stock up on food, and sell the rest for a little silver. Also, the area will be littered with skinnable boar corpses, so I strongly recommend that you train skinning and spend your first two levels killing boars. Skinning and selling everything to the nearby vendors, located here and here. Within two easy no-stress levels, you'll have cooking level to at least 50, have all your skills trained, and have four six-slot bags with silver left over. Give it a try and let me know what you think. There's also a vendor here that you may not be aware of. His name is Gerard Tiller, and he'll exchange one water for one apple. It's probably useless to you, but he's there if you need him. The Fargo Deep Mine, situated in between these fields, is the next quest location. Do not underestimate the dangers of questing in this mine. It is easy to become overwhelmed by mobs, and respawns happen quickly here. This location will regularly end hardcore runs. The mine and the surrounding area is guarded by level 5 and 6 Cobalt Miners and Tunnelers, with a level 8 named mob called Goldtooth residing deep within the mine. The loot that drops here isn't that bad, and a little time spent farming can get you started on your first aid, get you a few healing pots, and a little silver saved up. There's also a link in the description to a wand crafting guide that uses this location to farm the mats for the lesser magic wand. I definitely recommend you checking it out if you're rolling a caster. The next questing area is Crystal Lake, located on the eastern edge of Goldshire. Crystal Lake is defended by extremely territorial level 7 murlocs, who will call on all other murlocs in the area when in combat. Being swarmed by murlocs when swimming away will often result in an early death. In my hardcore runs, I often skip this area completely, and instead opt to quest in Dunmore until about level 10. I've added a link in the description for a deep run tram hack that speeds up the time it takes to make the journey, so check it out. North of Crystal Lake you will find the hilly border to the zone. These hills are a great place to level mining, as copper veins will spawn all along the zone to the border of Red Ridge. Make sure to take care though, as there are Defias, Cobalt and Riverbore camps all along the route. Down on the river sits Gerard's Landing, patrolled and camped by many Defias, up to level 10. Inside the boathouse waits the Defias Dockmaster, who can be pickpocketed by rogues as part of the weapons quest. If aggroed, the Dockmaster will spawn three level 10 bodyguards to attack you. This mechanic can be used over and over again if you're struggling to find mobs for the Red Linen Goods quest. As we head east, the safest part of the zone is south of the road, where the only aggressive mob you will see is the odd level 9 bear. At the very south of the zone, level 9 and 10 murlocs defend the riverside, but they are well spaced out and shouldn't cause you any problems. North of the road is more dangerous. Wandering wolves and bears are more common in this area, and level 10 prowler dens can be fatal if you wander into them. In the far north, we have the Jasper Load Mine. This area is teeming with cobalt miners and geomancers between level 6 and 8. The scout quest for this mine will definitely end some runs early, so as with all mines, proceed with caution and go in over-leveled. It's a great place to farm linen cloth if you need it, 
and they also drop magic candles. The next area is Brackwell Pumpkin Patch, where level 9 boar called Princess and her entourage patrol. Again, these boars are non-aggressive, but the whole pumpkin patch is surrounded by level 9 Defias bandits. Inside this house resides Morgan the Collector, Serena Caledon, and Earl and Drudge Moore. This lot will make quick work of ending your run if you get too close, so keep a safe distance and you should be fine. At the far east of the map we have Eastvale Logging Camp, which is the other main quest hub for the zone. In the paddock we can find the horse riding instructor who will train level 14 or above humans horse riding for 18 gold. Horse mounts can be bought off Katie Hunter, the horse breeder, for 72 gold for a normal mount and 900 gold for an epic mount. Relic Finn is another point of interest. Relic is a hunter equipment vendor who sometimes offers the green level 11 fine short bow for 28 silver. Definitely a vendor to remember. Inside this house, Drake Lindren is a general and trade supplies vendor who sometimes offers the pattern for blue linen robe. The journeyman tailoring trainer I mentioned earlier in the video is located here. And this is Terry Palin. He sells wood. To the north of Eastvale Logging Camp sits Stone Cairn Lake, which is surrounded by mobs. Riverpore runts and outrunners can be found in the north and northwest, and Murloc camps in the east and south. This is a great alternative location to quest if you need those Murloc fin drops, or Riverpore armbands, and everywhere else is stacked out with players. The island at the centre of Stone Cairn Lake, Hero's Vigil, is defended by level 10 Defias Wizards. The wizards on the outer perimeter are widely spaced and don't pose much of a threat when taken on one by one. The inner circle, however, is more densely packed and can be hazardous if multiple mobs are pulled. South of Deesvale Logging Camp is mainly patrolled by level 10 bears and prowlers and a great place to farm some more leather and meat. The far southwest is home to a camp of Defias bandits led by a named mob called Dead Tooth Jack. Murloc still defend the riverbank to the south, and at the river intersection there's a Murloc camp that should be avoided if possible. These boys are tightly packed and will mess you up fast if you're not prepared. Try to plan your leveling so that you ding 12 in this area. At level 12 you can safely run to the Red Ridge flight path and also complete the necklace quest for some easy XP. Back over to the west side of the map lies Mirror Lake. This area houses a variety of Defias, ranging from level 5 cut purses to level 9 bandits, and is an alternative area to completing the Red Linen Goods quest. A rare named mob called Morgrain the Sly inhabits this building, so enter this area with caution. The final questing location is the area south of Westbrook Garrison. In this area, you'll come across several camps of Riverpore runts and outrunners. Take care not to pull the whole group, and you'll be fine. Our final point of interest is the infamous Hogger, a level 11 humanoid elite that patrols the southern half of this peninsula. Hogger will headbutt for 250 damage and interrupt spellcasting for 5 seconds. He can do a rushing charge, which increases his movement speed by 80% for 3 seconds, and will do 70 additional damage on the first attack. And he can also pierce armour, reducing his target's armour by 50% for 20 seconds. Which means he's an absolute badass. Ideally, you will join a group to take Hogger down, although there are fence hopping techniques that can be used to keep him at a distance while you use ranged weapons to take him down solo. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more hardcore survival guides, and let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And until next time, enjoy your time in Azeroth, and I'll see you in the next one.